Now let's get over to Rach. Told us before your dog is on a <laughs> diet, which staggers me. That's my takeaway from the show today. But uh, <laughs> how about vitamins? Uh, have you got vitamins uh, sorted out for your dog? No vitamins for Simba, but we did, in addition to the diet, realise that he had a bit of um, uh, plaque on the teeth, on the canine. Oh. So he's on dental care tablets or uh, dry food now. But like humans, I think it's really about taking that holistic approach, mind, body and soul. And we talk about this so much on the show. We do, Rach, and, and that was a wonderful story. And it, when people have a dog, the first thing they want to do is take it for a walk because, again, mutually beneficial. Mm. So I want to talk to you today about energy to walk the dog, but energy generally. New spark plugs, energy generating, the nutrient is coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. Tell me more. What exactly is CoQ10? This is an oil-soluble antioxidant, Rachel, that works at cellular level. So mm -hmm. it produces energy within every muscle cell in our body. And the main muscle we need to work efficiently is actually our heart. That mm. has huge demands on coenzyme Q10. And that's why it's so important that we maintain those levels if we possibly can. So what happens if those natural levels drop and how do we recognise that? We probably recognise those with fatigue. And you get sore muscles, you just don't have the get up and go that maybe you used to have for some reason or other. Now, that can happen with ageing because, sadly, after about 20, 21, 22, our levels of CoQ10 in our body, they start to drop away. Mm. So as we age, we still want the energy, mm. but we aren't able to produce it to the same levels. And sadly, there are some medications which can affect those okay. levels as well. So fix us up. How do we increase the levels? Well, you can get some CoQ10 from food, Rachel, but you've got to have a lot of food to get any, But because mm. food's always the thing we go to. Mm -hmm. So nuts, avocado beef, pork, they've got some levels of CoQ10 that we can absorb. But the simplest thing to do is just to take it in supplement form. I have a pretty active lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. I'm always on the go and mm -hmm. I do notice when my energy levels start to drop, something that really helps me, vitamin D. And we assume, don't we, Rach, that we're in Australia, we're in the sun, mm. which we all are, and we assume that our levels are going to be really quite high. Sadly, uh, even though 80% of our vitamin D3 is produced in our body from sunshine, in spite of that, many Australians have very, very low levels. So looking at some sort of support there is worthwhile. What's the difference between vitamin D and vitamin D3? Well, D3 is really, that's the usable form in our body. Gotcha. Because the sun shines on the skin, it, through a special series of processes, we get an absorbable Because I always form. get confused. I always read about vitamin D3. So you've talked about CoQ10, vitamin D3. Who would benefit from that combination of both? Really, you look at what symptoms arise from insufficient levels. So people who get infections constantly, uh, people who are battling with fatigue and they're, they're really struggling with energy levels, mm. uh, people who get consistent infections, they don't get over a cold. That's a D3 issue as well. But I, I also think as well that medications especially, the cholesterol-lowering medications interfere mm. with our ability to manufacture CoQ10 in our liver. So if you're taking those, get some advice as to whether coenzyme Q10 can play a role. Or you can tuck into a bit of meat with a little bit of smashed avo on the side, get out, enjoy the sunshine, and hopefully you will feel your inner spark ignite. Perfect. Thank you, Gerald. <laughs> the A to Z of vitamins is brought to you by Go Healthy, New Zealand's number one premium supplement brand, now available in Australia.